So you join me in a very cluttered office today because um, I wanted to show you something on the computer. There are plenty of EV chargers for sale on the internet today on sites like eBay, Amazon, loads of other places. Many of these are cheap. So are they good buys? The reasons why you should avoid these bargains, um, especially as the EVHS disappears at the end of March, private homeowners might be tempted to purchase one of these and then either fit it themselves or go to somebody like ourselves or a local electrician and ask them to fit it. I want to go through a couple of the examples that um, people have sent to me and give you my thoughts on it. Let's roll the intro. So I want to say thanks to Robert Lewis for giving me the idea on this video. Um, he actually sent me one of the links. Um, so thank you, Robert. And at the end of the video, if you want to leave some comments, make sure you give us a cheeky thumbs up on that like button and subscribe for notifications of our future videos and check out our other social media links. So the two charges that we're going to look at today uh, is this Cube EV on Amazon for 2 99 99 pence. You can also get it with installation for an additional £685 per unit. Um, um. Not sure about that, but uh, 32 amp, 7.2 kilowatt. Uh, it's a socketed unit, so untethered. Looks sort of similar, maybe a little bit bigger to the Sync EV and the EO Mini Pro. And then the other one is this uh, car tool. Also, one pence shy of £300 on eBay. This is a tethered unit, um, 7 kilowatt, 32 amps, and it comes with an 8.5 metre cable. So, car tool has a big cable. Okay, so, so one of the things I want to touch on is I know the title is a bit clickbaity. We want to sort of dig into that and re are these realistically good buys or are they dangerous or is it somewhere in between? So the first thing that I touch on on these is that they're both um, available on eBay and Amazon. They both have sort of 30-day returns policies or whatever the standard returns policies are for those websites. However, one of the things that you will run into, um, if you're installing it yourself, this probably doesn't apply so much, but if you get somebody else to install a product that you've bought off eBay or Amazon, the first problem you'll run into is confusions and issues with warranty support. So um, if an electrician installs some goods that you've supplied and those turn out to be faulty, you're kind of in a dilemma whether the electrician will support that from a warranty point of view. So if they install it and it just doesn't work and needs to be sent back, who's going to take it off the wall? Is the electrician going to take it off the wall for free? Probably not. If it's going to take extra time or if they need to come back and remove it off the wall and install a new one, the likelihood is um, they're going to charge you for that. So already your bargain has been lost. So I guess that's something you need to clarify with the electrician or the installer or the person installing before the work goes ahead because you could quite quickly find yourself out of pocket. So when we install chargers that we've supplied, it's covered by our own warranty. So if there's an issue with that charger, we would come back, assess what the issue is, and if it's faulty, replace those parts for free or replace the charger for free as covered by the warranty. Often as well, especially if it's an OLEV charger, um, and as the OLEV ends, certain charger manufacturers are maintaining three and five year warranties. That's covered by that warranty work. Now, us as installers, we have different agreements with different charger manufacturers, but a lot of the manufacturers will actually pay us to conduct those site visits and replace the faulty parts or replace the chargers. So, um, yeah, we are incentivized to support that from a warranty point of view. But if you supply the equipment yourself, you're probably not going to get that. And these chargers, 
don't seem to mention any extended warranties. So you're likely to get one year warranty maximum. Just want to touch on if you're doing the work yourselves, um, you might not be aware that there are laws in the UK for um, somebody who's not competent to conduct electrical works and uh, if they're not notifying building regulations you're also running into legal issues so adding a charge point means adding a brand new circuit to your installation which is notifiable to building regs and requires you to be registered with a competent person scheme or notifying your local authority building regulations if you don't do that it's punishable by fines and if it causes injury or damage to property you could face fines or even jail time so these are things worth considering when you're looking at saving some money so the next thing to take into account is whether these charges conform to the bs 7671 requirements so one of these charges does one doesn't so just showing you my screen again, uh, the QBV does have an 18th edition version. Let me find it. So if you go down here, right, so this is the important bit, 6 milliamp DC protection device. 18th edition variant comes with a type B RCD and MCB, an enclosure. Earthing rod must be bought separately. So this set does... Uh, supposedly come with a type B RCD built in. So it conforms to the 6 milliamp DC sensitive protection. Uh, so what that is looking for is measuring whether DC current is leaking back into the electrical installation from the car's battery. Um, this would only happen on a faulty car. Is it likely? Not very likely. Is it possible? Yes. And that's why it's mitigated against in the regulations. Um, six milliamps is a tiny amount of current, but that level is chosen because if a DC current higher than that leaks back into the supply, it can actually stop your RCDs working, which in turn means um, if you get another device that goes faulty then, the RCDs won't trip and you could be electrocuted or it could cause a fire. Yeah, if we take a look at the car tool charger, so, oh, sorry, Mr. Car Tool, this charging station doesn't mention any kind of, it says in its safe protection design that there is earth leakage protection, but it doesn't really say what that is, um, what, how many milliamps that'll trip at, my guess is it doesn't have any, the, all of these protections don't really com, comply to the wiring regulations. I certainly wouldn't trust it installing it myself. So this is a really important feature which is built into pretty much all the chargers on the market today, which are proper chargers. If they're not, you have to use a type B RCD, which is extremely expensive. So it's not that you can't install this and meet the wiring regulations, but it needs to be installed properly by somebody who knows what they're doing using the right protective devices. My guess is if you're buying this charge point to save some money, it won't save you any money if it's installed properly because the proper um, Type B RCD is going to blow the cost savings out of the water. Um, and I'm comparing that to charge points such as the Sync EV and the EO Mini Pro. Another major feature which is lacking on both these charge points is pen fault detection. This is really common on most chargers that we install today. So that means you have to have an earth rod installed if these charge points are installed and the cars are being charged outside. So um, with these chargers in particular, you either need to install that earth rod or have a pen fault device. If somebody's installing this and they don't know what they're doing, they might not install an earth rod when it's needed, um, and that can be extremely dangerous. We've got a separate video on that, so you can click, click the link um, in the card above. So there are a few people on the internet who <laughs> will tell you that a fault such as the 6 milliamp DC 
uh, leakage detection or the pen fault detection. The, the chances of a fault occurring are so low, it's not worth worrying about. The chances of one of these faults occurring is extremely low. However, I don't want to be the one who wins that lottery and gets a shock um, or, you know, somebody from your family gets electrocuted or your house gets burnt down. You don't want to be winning that lottery um, and those minimal chances. After all, as everybody moves towards electric cars, it's like the lottery. I'm probably not going to win, but somebody's going to win and you don't want to be the person who ends up all those different fault conditions converge at the same time and you get electrocuted. So, um, yeah, it's extremely rare, but en masse, it's going to happen. And that's why it's mitigated for in the wiring regs and why you have qualified people installing these charge points and making sure the installations meet those wiring regulations. So trolls on the internet will tell you it's not required. I disagree. Some of those features that are not present on these charge points are things like being able to use it with an app to monitor how much you're charging your car compared with how much your house is using, for example. Electricity tariffs are going to get more dynamic and cheaper at night and things like that, and there's going to be more incentives or disincentivizing people to use electricity at its peak times. So that brings me to things like um, the octopus tariffs and things like that. Speaking of which, if you are thinking of switching electricity suppliers, make sure you check out our octopus referral code to get £50 credit for you, £50 credit for us on your octopus account when you sign up with octopus. Being able to schedule your charging and monitor your usage is just going to get more and more important as electricity becomes more and more expensive. And electric cars fall more in line with what we're spending on petrol cars at the moment. Another safety thing would be the lack of load management on these chargers. Now, not all chargers have it, but more and more of the charge points that we install have some kind of load management facility. That future proofs you... So as homes and cars move more towards electrification, so you have more electric heating systems and you have more electric vehicles on the roads, you need to think about how much load will be on that house. A charge point takes up a lot, big portion of that load. If you want to add a second charge point, you have to have load management. Obviously, when we're doing our work, we assess all these things and make a recommendation based on the house loading and your future proofing needs. It's something you want to be considering for full future proofing. So the final thing um, that I'd like to point out, and it's something that's mentioned in articles a lot, is people are spending you know, a lot of money on an electric car. They can't afford to put in an expensive charge point as well. I would argue the opposite. If you're spending, you know, anywhere between five and a hundred thousand pounds on an electric car, you need to be considering the cost of installing the charge point as well, because of the pink shitty iPhone lead from eBay effect. So there's a, a song somewhere on the internet about um, someone who buys the latest expensive iPad. And then they think, well, I've already spent so much on my iPad, so I don't want to spend a lot on a charger. So he buys a pink, shitty iPhone lead off eBay. And he plugs it in, and it's a bit rubbish, goes faulty, and burns his whole house down. If you're buying a £40,000 um, Tesla Model 3, or a £100,000 Porsche Taycan, or a £5,000 Nissan Leaf. You don't want to be charging that investment of your money with something that could potentially hurt you or damage your um, vehicle or damage your house. I will want my investment to be charged with a charge point that I know is reliable. Are these chargers going to kill you? If installed properly, these chargers will be just as safe as anything else. However, 
like all charge points, if they're not installed properly, they could potentially be dangerous. You're not going to buy a charger like this off eBay or Amazon and get somebody who's comfortable installing them, who really knows what they're doing, I don't think. So I would just go to your local installers, speak to people who've got good ratings or come recommended and get their advice. That's my thoughts. Let us know what you think in the comments below. Do you think they're potentially dangerous? Do you think that they're a good place to buy them from? This is just my opinions, my thoughts based on my experience. So I hope that was useful. If it was, cheeky thumbs up on that like button. Subscribe, hit the bell icon. Check out our other social media, Octopus Referral Code. And Happy New Year. Thanks very much for watching.